So today we're going to talk about multiplying polynomials in chapter 7, section 2. Um, this is going to, this is our next lesson after um, section 1, which is talking about adding and subtracting polynomials. So now we're going to get into multiplying polynomials. So, first of all, we need to talk about how certain terms or specific terms are multiplied. So it says rules of exponents for products of powers. To multiply two powers having the same base, you add the exponents. Okay, so if you have the same base, whatever that base might be, for example, here we have the base of A. If A to a certain power is being multiplied by A to another power, you just add those two powers. And here's our example. If we have x to the third times x to the fifth, when we do that, when they're being multiplied with the same base, you add those exponents, okay? You do not multiply the exponents. So x to the third times x to the fifth becomes x to the eighth. So that's what you're looking for whenever you're multiplying bases that are the same. So let's look at a couple examples here. This first one, 3n to the second times 4n to the fourth. So when you're multiplying polynomials, well, these are actually monomials. When you're multiplying monomials, you want to go part by part. So the very first thing you should start with is your coefficients. You're going to multiply your coefficients of each term first. So here, we have a coefficient of 3 and a coefficient of 4. So you're just multiplying each of those to get 12. So your answer there would be 12. And then you move on to your variables. So here we have n to the second times n to the fourth. So because those have the same base of n, we add their exponents. So n to the second times n to the fourth becomes n to the sixth. So multiplying polynomials are quite simple. You just have to pay attention and keep your thoughts organized as you go through it. Same with this next one. We have negative 3 a to the third, b to the second, times 5a, b to the fourth. So once again, we need to go part by part. Start with your coefficients. Our coefficient here, negative 3. Coefficient here, 5. If you don't remember what coefficient is, remember it's your number out in front of the variables. Okay, so it's your leading number in front. So negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. Okay? Next, we have a to the third times a. Here's where I'll have people get confused. They will put the answer as a to the third. But remember, this a right here, if there's no, vari or no exponent on it, it has an exponent of 1. So actually, this is a to the third times a to the first. So because those have the same base, you can add their exponents. So that becomes a to the fourth. And last, you go to your b's. Again, showing in order, we have b to the second times b to the fourth. Those have the same base, so we can add their exponents, and that will become b to the sixth. So there's your final answer. Negative 15a to the fourth, b to the sixth. So that's what you're looking for whenever you're multiplying these monomials, polynomials, whatever. We'll get into the polynomials. But you have to make sure they have the same base, and then they, you add their exponents as you do that. So you'll have a special type of multiplying polynomials um, that you'll see quite a bit, um, which is whenever you're multiplying two binomials, that's the most popular, it seems, um, type that you will see when it comes to multiplying polynomials. It says when you multiply two binomials, Remember, binomials have two terms. Multiplied together, you can use FOIL to solve it. Okay? FOIL is just an easy thing to remember um, that makes it easier or it's a very simple pattern to do when multiplying um, binomials. FOIL stands for first, outer, inner, last. And what that means is you're going to multiply your first terms, your outer terms, your inner terms, and then your last terms. And I'll show you what that will look like. So that's what we're doing in this one when we multiply binomials. Okay, so here we have 2x plus 5 
And then we have 3x plus 2. So what you're wanting to do, again, whenever it says first, outer, inner, last, you're talking about the first terms of each binomial. So first terms will look like this. You'll multiply those first, 2x and 3x. So 2x times 3x, again, you just multiply your coefficients first, 2 times 3, 6. x times x, remember each of these have a power of 1, so x to the first times x to the first, those have the same base, so you add their exponents, so this becomes x to the second. Let me actually move that down so I have room to draw the lines. So that is 6 x to the second. So that's your first, f and foil. O stands for outer. Outer means the outside term. So we have 2x and 2 on the outside. So I'm going to multiply these two. 2x times 2. Again, you do your coefficients. 2 times 2 is 4, so plus 4. And then x, and this one doesn't have an x, so we just have the single x there, so it's plus 4x. I in FOIL stands for inner. Those are your inner terms right here. Inner terms right here. 5 times 3x, so 5 times 3, those are your coefficients. That is 15. And then we just have an x that is brought down with it. And then lastly, your last terms, the last term in each binomial, right there. So 5 times 2 is 10. This is not your final answer, though, because you do need to combine like terms if possible. So here, there's only 1x to the second. So that just comes down, 6x to the second. We have 4x and 15x, so those need to be combined. 4x plus 15x becomes 19x. And then we have plus 10 on the end. So there's your final answer once you've combined like terms. 6x to the second plus 19x plus 10. So that's what we're doing as we go through this. You're just doing your first terms. You're multiplying first terms, outer terms, inner terms, last terms. Okay, let's look at another example to explain this a little further. Make sure we understand. So we have t minus 5, and then negative times negative 3 plus 2t. So again, we're going to follow that same pattern. We'll start with our first terms. Whenever we have two binomials, always think FOIL. It makes it easiest on you. So, first terms is t times negative 3. And that obviously just becomes negative 3t. Next, outer terms, t times 2t. That is 2t to the second, because remember, there's t, this is 1, this is, or this is 1, sorry, this is 2, so 1 times 2 for the coefficients equals 2, and this is t to the first and t to the first, so same basis with exponents of 1, you add them, and that becomes t to the second. Next, FOIL, inner terms, is our i, so inner terms, negative 5 times negative 3, remember these signs go with them, so that becomes positive 15. And lastly, we have our last terms. Negative 5 times 2t is negative 10t. So we actually have a little more work to do here because we also want to make sure it's in standard form with our highest exponents first and our lowest exponents last. So here, our highest exponent is t to the second. And there's nothing for it to combine with, so I'm going to write it out in front. 2t to the second. And if you want to mark that out, you can, just so you know that you've dealt with that or you've brought it down. After that, we need to combine our t's because we have a negative 3t and a negative 10t. So negative 3t minus 10t will give you negative or minus 13t. Remember, when you just combine these, they're 
exponent does not change. So it's still just an exponent of one. So then that canceled with that, and then we have plus 15 left. You always want your constant or the number without a variable last. So there's your final answer. Two t to the second minus 13 t plus 15. So let's see if we can do a couple of these on our own. So I want you to try these two using FOIL. So pause the video, try it out. Then when you think you got it, you can start it back up. All right, so let's look at this first one. Again, you're just following that pattern of FOIL. FOIL, first letter is F, so that stands for first. So I take the first term in the first binomial, first term in the second binomial. 2x times 4x. Multiply your coefficients, 4 times 2 is 8. x to the first times x to the first. We ha have to add those exponents, so that becomes x to the second. Next, we do our outer terms. 2x times 1, and that will just be 2x. Then we move on to i, our inner terms. 3 times 4x. So 3 times 4 is 12. And then we can just have an x with it. And then l last, 3 times 1 is 3. So we bring down our 8x to the second because there's nothing for it to combine with. Then we have to look where our like terms are. 2x and 12x are like terms. They have the same, same variable with the same exponent. So we just combine those to become 14x. And then we bring down our constant plus 3. There's nothing for 3 to combine with. So there's your final answer. That's what you should have gotten for the first one. Okay. Look at the next one. Three x minus five times one plus two x. Okay, so we'll start with our first terms in foil. First is three x and one. Three x times one is just three x. We go to O, our outer terms, 3x times 2x. That becomes, you multiply your coefficients, 6, and then x times x becomes x to the second. Because again, we're adding those exponents of 1 and 1. I enter, negative 5 times 1 is just negative 5. And then L last, negative 5 times 2x is negative 10x. Okay, then we want to make sure we do standard form, so start with your highest exponent of 2. There's nothing for it to combine with, so I'm going to bring it down. 6x to the second. Then we go on to the exponents of 1. We have an exponent of 1 here and an exponent of 1 here. So these need to combine. 3x minus 10x becomes negative 7x. And then we have our constant of negative 5, so I bring it down, minus 5. So there's your final answer for the second one. 6x to the second, minus 7x, minus 5. Okay? So with binomials, you can just use FOIL to get that answer. You also might have polynomials past just... Um, you, can, you might have polynomials just past where it's just a binomial to binomial. You might have binomial trinomial, binomial, binomial four-term four -term polynomial. So it could get more. But it says multiplying polynomials is done the same way as multiplying a polynomial by a, by a monomial. Use the distributive property. So all you're doing is you're going to use the distributive property to take that, the terms in the first polynomial to the terms of the second polynomial. And I'll show you what that means. Let's look at examples using this idea.
So this says multiply 3x minus 2 times 2x squared minus 5x minus 4. So 3x minus 2 times 2x squared minus 5x minus 4. So what you're going to do here is you're going to first start with your first term in that first binomial or any polynomial it is. And you're just going to take it to each term. You're going to take it and multiply it by each term in the second polynomial that you're multiplying it by. And then after you do that, you'll go back and do the same thing with the second term. It's just using distributive property. So here, I'm going to start with 3x and multiply it by this first term over here, 2x squared. So 3x times 2x squared, you multiply your coefficients first, 3 times 2 is 6, and then x times x to the second, remember this is a 1, so x to the first times x to the second, same base, you add their exponents, becomes x to the third. Then we continue that pattern, then we go 3x times negative 5x, so 3x times negative 5x, multiply coefficients, 3 times negative 5, negative 15, x times x becomes x to the second. Next, 3x times negative 4. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12, and then we still have the x with it that we bring, bring down. So once we've multiplied that first term by all the terms in the second one, we go back and do the same thing with this second term. So negative 2 becomes multiplied by 2x to the second. So that becomes negative 4x to the second. Then we do negative 2 times negative 5x. Again, you're continuing this pattern. So negative 2 times negative 5, that's positive 10. And then we have the x with it. Lastly, we take negative 2 times negative 4. Negative times a negative is a positive, so that is positive 8. So obviously there's a lot more terms here, so we need to then go back and combine like terms. So start with your highest exponent, 6x to the third. There's no other exponents of 3, so 6x to the third just comes down. 6x to the third. Then we go to 2, exponent of 2. We actually have two terms here with an exponent of 2. Negative 15x to the second, negative 4 x to the second. So we combine those to become negative 19 x to the second. And again, when you combine like terms, remember, like in, we did in section one, these keep the same exponent, just stays an exponent of two. Okay, so we've done, we've done those. Then we go to exponent of one. We have negative 12x and positive 10x. When we combine those, negative 12 plus 10 is negative two. So negative two x. So we finish those off and then we have our constant left plus 8. It does not have anything to combine with. So there's your final answer for that one. 6x to the third minus 19x to the second minus 2x plus 8. So as long as you, like I said, the, the actual math of this is not difficult. It's just following that pattern. So you start with your first term, distribute it to each term in the second polynomial. Take your set next term, distribute it to each term in the polynomial. And then you combine like terms after you've multiplied everything out. Okay, so here's one I want you to try on your own. So we have, this one might be a little more difficult. Pause the video, try it on your own, and then we will do it together. Okay, so let's look at this one. Again, you start with that first term. So first thing I'm going to do is multiply y times x to the third. 
Those are not the same base. You cannot combine their exponents. So you just put them together being multiplied. Start with your alphabetical order, x first, then y. So this would be x to the third, y. That's all that becomes is x to the third, y. Then you move on to the next one. y times negative 2y to the second, or y to the third, sorry. So 1 times negative 2, start with coefficients, that's negative 2. y to the first times y to the third, same base, so you combine their exponents. So this becomes y to the fourth. Then we go y times 3x y to the second. Start with coefficients. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 3. This one does not have an x, this one does, so we have to bring down the x. And then y to the first times y to the second becomes y to the third. Okay? Next, we do y times x to the second, y to the second. So, x to the second, and then y times y is y to the second. All right, so we've done all the first terms. So then we go to the next one. Take the second term and multiply it by each, each of the terms in the second polynomial. 2x times x to the third. That would be 2x to the fourth, because now we have x times x to the third. We add those exponents. So 2x to the fourth. Next, 2x times negative 2y to the third. Coefficients, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. This has an x, this does not, so we bring down the x. This has a y, this does not, so we bring down y to the third. Next, 2x times 3xy to the second. So, multiply the or the coefficients first, that would become 6, 2 times 3 is 6, x times x is x squared, and this does not have a y, but this does, so we bring down the y to the second. And the last one, 2x times x squared y, would be plus 2, x times x to the second is x to the third, this doesn't have a y, this does, so we bring down y. So I know that's a lot of variables. So now we have to go through and combine like terms. So with like terms, what you have to do is start with your highest exponent for the first variable. So x is what we're going to start with. So the highest variable for x is 4, which is right here. Okay, so we have an exponent of 4 for x. There's no other x with an exponent of 4, so therefore that's the only one we have. We bring it down. 2x to the 4th. Then we go x to the 3rd. We have an x to the 3rd here with y, and we have an x to the 3rd here with y. So these both have to be the same. Okay, If this one was just x to the 3rd and this was x to the 3rd y, you couldn't combine them. But since they're both x to the 3rd y, we can combine those. So we're going to combine this with that. So 1x to the third y plus 2x to the third y becomes positive 3x to the third y. So we can mark those out. Next we go to x to the second. We have x to the second. x to the second here. So it's x to the second y to the second. And here we also have x to the second y to the second. So we combine 6x to the second y to the second and 1x to the second y to the second. So that becomes 7x to the second y to the second. Okay. Keep moving on. We go to x to the first. Here's x to the first y to the third. And here's x to the first y to the third. So we combine that with that. And 3 minus 4 is negative 1, x, y to the third. Once we're done with our x's, we go to our y's. And as you can see, we only have one y by itself. So we bring that down, negative or minus 2, y to the fourth. So I know that's a lot, but there is your final answer on that one. 2x to the fourth plus 3x to the third y 
plus 7x to the second, y to the second, minus 1xy to the third, minus 2y to the fourth. Okay, so I know that was a lot. Um, hopefully that gave you a better understanding of multiplying polynomials. Main thing to remember is first keep your work organized because obviously there's a lot of being multiplied here. Um, and understand when you have same bases, you have to add their exponents. That's the main thing with this section. You start with your coefficients, multiply those, and then with the same bases, you add exponents from there. Thanks.